All righty ho, let's go for part two. Okay, so we were at desync. Um, ah, desync's not much to say about. For the love of God, please give the Oceanic guys some. I don't know. Basically, don't be. Let them in the dark, man. I know you know they're on a continent all by themselves. Um, is that good? Is that bad? You know, it makes it super hard to let them play. Excuse me. Makes it super hard to make them play, of course, because with the rest of the world, because they're isolated on an island so far away from everybody else. But that doesn't mean that you should just, you know, if they have two times of 30 minutes, tell them what the fuck is going on. They're spamming the Reddit subreddit of PUBG daily. Just give him closure. Either you know, either tell him to fuck off, or tell him, "Sorry, fellas, this is the problem. This we can't fix." People are extremely understanding and forgiving if they know what's up. Because if you have to let it over to their imagination, PUBG, I can assure you, it's not going to end up well for you. It might be fixed, but like, basically, ten percent of your the people that pay money are like. They don't even can't use your product and you're not even acknowledging them. Why? Do it. Just it takes fucking one guy 50 minutes to tell them to say, guys, I'm sorry, you live on an island in the middle of the ocean where nobody gives a shit about. It, okay? Bye. You know, I hate to say, you know, I hate to be the crew guy and tell guys in oceanic, you know, the oceanic region, but like Leaving them in the dark is not cool, man. No. At least give them the honest truth. People appreciate honesty more than I think most people think at this point in time. So, for the love of God, I don't want to see those guys suffer. Either end their suffering by giving them a solution or give them, uh, you know, telling them, I'm sorry, it's not going to be possible. Not hard. Oof. Next one. Apparently, there is no US West server. Oh! If this is the case, I don't know. I'm not gonna assume. Let's give PUBG the benefit of that. If this is the case, I don't know. Yeah. Like, at this point in time, I have nothing to add to it. Nothing. Like, California is, I think, the fifth or the sixth largest economy in the world. It is the birthplace of basically all technology that we day and day and use. Even this, this document that I made is used with technology from Silicon Valley and you don't have a server there. Moving on. Okay, South African player base. Same as with the guys, these seem to be the only one in Africa that play video games. Uh, at least give them some consolation and tell them to fuck off. Or tell them, you know, same as with Oceanic. Either tell them, um, tell them what's going on, and that um, if South Africa is happy with their, you know, at least their answer or their uh, price, you know, to put it like that, then they should give PUBG a plumpy. That's uh, South African for thumbs up, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you know, either tell them. Get lost or tell them here's a fix. This is when it comes. Same with South America. They also have problem with skewing and yada yada yada. Um, grammar mistake. Be happening. Um, basically, if anything under the equator doesn't seem to get much love from PUBG. Fix it. It's really not hard to talk to people unless you have some obscure and shady, shady intentions. Then it is. General lag fixing and refresh, uh, refresh rate if you want to go for the esports routes, which I highly doubt, uh, highly don't recommend. So, uh, fix this. Progression. Since the beginning of time, people want to grow and prosper. In video games, it's you want to improve. We want to become strong. We want to become the best of the best. We want to, you know, have go on the next adventure, complete the next mission. We want to do so much things. Um, a healthy progression system will keep 
players hooked for years. I'm telling you this now. That's why World of Warcraft, especially in the beginning, from Classic to uh, Wrath of the Lich King, people were... Uh, people love that game so much. PUBG, unfortunately, the only progression is once we personally see, uh, personally want to uh, apply. Uh, what does that mean? It means that the progression, let's say, I want to become better with the AK. I want to, you know, it's progression you set out yourself, and that's a good thing, but not as good as being able to, um, what do you call it? You know, having also a mechanism. Oh, you, you, let's say, uh, let's say, uh, maybe. Yes, AR control I said in the example. Let's say we want to use the barrel better. You know, barrel is probably be the highest recoil kick in the game. Why don't make you? Why don't you make a challenge? Barrel 500 kills. Give them a skin if they get 500 kills with the barrel. Whatever, thousand kills, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand, five thousand. I don't care. Make it a compelling challenge that people combine their own goals with. The goals that PUBG set out to be. If you combine those two, people are hooked. And the only thing they want to think about when they go to school, their work, their date, their wife, their kids, I don't care what they're doing. The only thing they will be thinking about is getting those kills with the barrel. I want that. Oh, that would be so lit. Yeah. Sorry for drinking in the meanwhile, but it is uh, <laughs> getting quite dry from all the stalking. Um, but yeah, basically a good progression system. If you want to know how to make a good progression system or two, just call me PUBG. Then I check uh, with it because I get it. Um, of course, we can go in all the details because psychological. I'm pretty sure I've already made this way too long. But basically, give them an item if they do a certain thing. Timed items in the progression system. I don't know which fucker came up with this. Excuse my language. Um, I don't know who this was that came up with the wonderful idea timed items. If he has a Harvard MBA. If he has... Uh, I don't know what he has or what he does or where did he get it from. Fire that guy. Make sure he never, you know, publicly shame him if you have to do him. Uh, make sure he never gets a job anywhere in the same industry. I'm pretty outspoken and pretty rude about it. Normally I care a lot about people's job. But in this case, like, it's the dumbest thing ever created for a reward for doing something you want to do. A timed item that's basically a trial version of a skin that's in a loot box system where you get a loot box system to get your loot boxes so you can get the loot box which has the timed skin in order for the, uh, to get your timed item into a permanent item from the loot box it fucking sell. Woo! As you can see, I'm quite pissed about some things PUBG is doing. And this isn't about, oh, it's an indie studio that doesn't know that there's to develop. Bullshit. The Whoopsie daisy. I go with my drink. Ahem. <clears throat> Timed items, dumbest thing ever. The reward step was changed to the store. This one, that one, literally like, come on, man. But like, I remember it in game, like, why? Why? You know, I know it wasn't a reflective of reality, the rewards in the store, uh, the reward step, but at least it made me feel a little bit that I was getting rewarded for the gameplay. And should the game reward you for the gameplay that you do? No, of course not. This go doesn't. Did it, you know, back in the day, 1.6 and Counter Strike so doesn't really happen that much. Um, but that doesn't. It's better to have it than better to not have it. That's what I'm trying to say with it. Like the the things, uh, total having a total level. So like, you know, oh, I played 1,500 hours. You know, what level would that give me? You know, 780 or something would be cool. Basically that you can go on infinitely with all levels. It would be super cool. Or like a max level. A lot of games do it. Personally, I think an infinite level system never been implemented pretty well. Might be. Um, but it's better than max level. Um, 
a reward type of, like the mid autumn festival ones where you can let like the 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 pointy hat and stuff oh i love that i love that the only thing you had to do was get in top five it gives an incentive for people to play to win and that's what we need in every game not some loot boxes as a reward for doing a good job well in my case wasn't too heavy about it especially in the early days because i mean you know winning a game would buy me a loot box and buying me a loot box would make me to sell it on steam which gave me three bug three euros do that over and over again for a game you want to play in your free time why not yo Whew. um Again, I've played so long this game with progression. I think if uh, there was progression, I would be in a um, addiction clinic. But um, other than, you know, it's just nice to get rewarded or to see yourself progress. Basically, you have feedback on your progression because progression in itself is one thing. But having the feedback of your progression is another thing. I mean, simple leveling. It's it sounds maybe stupid, but I don't know it's it's not that hard to program in like these are not changes that take hundreds of manpower and stuff it just takes one guy with a coder and a fucking MacBook. okay 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 this one. Oh, that one made me furiously mad i consider myself a pretty good pubg player let's say i don't want to brag about it i don't want to show off uh, let's say i'm in the top 10 percent easy okay i win a lot if I try hard, I get a lot of kills. I'm not the worst of the worst. Let's put it that way. Even I had incredible, incredible amount of trouble even getting close to this. I'm not kidding you. Even the best of the best are not able to complete this. I highly doubt that anybody ever. Well, that's maybe a hard thing, but like this. It's 0.01% of the players that completed this challenge. I can assure you that right now. I'm telling you that. It's basically impossible to get it. And that's that means a lot. Um, so, yeah. Not much about this to say. If you're gonna make an impossible laundry list of things to do, at least make it one game. But this is literally in game copy paste. Like, even this looted at least two crates CP. I know basically every gun out inside and outside. I knew every statistic about it. I never knew what two crates CP meant. Airdrop? Died? Well, 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 what's the P? Even if a challenge is not even clear to the guy who has to complete it, then you know you're on a bad track. Like, how do you do this? This is like a clear example of people that didn't play test the challenge. So obvious that they didn't play test their own challenge. Simple as that. My green screen stopped working. Oh well. Okay. Okay. Uh, progression items. Since it's realistically themed, having some kind of patches and having a R like in the army decorate achievement would be wonderful. This ties back into progression leveling, etc. etc. But like having being able to have like a pin on your you know, your you basically to show off to your squad mates or something. Having like a pin, uh, you know, in the army they have like generals have Hundreds of pins. So basically those pins. You know. Could. Can be all the things. So like. A, a hat. Or maybe not that. But like. Maybe a light on your chest or something. And. Change colors. I mean you can do some creative stuff with it. This is desperately needed. Again. Uh, same as with the normal challenges. Flashy animations. You know. Your brain likes it when there's like a sound and stuff like Wah! I don't know. Don't know where that came from. Not that. <laughs> um, 
I have a lot of challenges. I want to relate to an event right to write. This basically still ties in the discussion. Yada, yada, yada. Same and same thing. PUBG secrecy. This is probably one of the main teams that PUBG is completely doing wrong. They have like, Oh my god, our game is so special. And it's like, it's a purple cow. And we need to keep it a secret. And nobody can know whatever we do. Um, stuff like that, in this case, kills your marketing. Kills your market share. Um, why? Like, I never knew. I'm telling you now. I never knew when season change. When seasons resets, never knew. Only reason I knew was because I go went to PUBG punt up punt JJ, whatever. I go on that website and it suddenly says, "Oh, there's a new season." So I know from an outside source, which is basically ripping on your data, that the season has changed. Dude, are you joke? Why? Like, at least have an announcement. Oh, five days until season eight uh, ends. Uh, season nine. I don't know. Make it clear. Fortnite does it. Don't worry. Fortnite didn't steal the bad stuff from me. <laughs> Sorry for ripping on, you know, the Fortnite and PUBG fiasco. But if PUBG decided to sue Fortnite, they should have a goddamn good reason. Because, in my opinion, Fortnite only took the good ideas. In the beginning, in the very beginning, Fortnite did clearly, oh, oh PUBG is getting popular. Let's make our save the world game and turn it into a, uh, what do you call it? A uh, battle royale. Even the knocked out animations and stuff was obvious as can be. Um, um, I'm telling, like, telling you that. Um, uh, yeah, that was clearly, uh, like, I was thinking, like, when Fortnite came out, this is clearly such a big ass rebuff. But uh, guess what? Fortnite made it work and turned it into something their own. I recently did the cube event. Um, that cube event was amazing. Uh, I was amazed. I, I never had goosebumps playing uh, like doing that. I mean, things like that. I don't see PUBG doing it, so I don't really care that much. That like secret like is it that hard to say oh we're season eight there's the ranking letters this is these are the top players while well, we're at it you know feedback uh feedback plus celebration of the uh season winners so if somebody gets like the top ten they get like an exclusive skin yada yada uh uh the League of Legends season rewards. Uh, League of Legends does it incredibly well. Like if you get uh, gold or platinum, you get like a, a, a victorious skin and stuff. Doesn't mean much. No, it means not much. Even the war skin, but it's the meaning behind it because it's a memory you get, or at least like a memorabilia of ah, oh, you uh, finished victorious in this. So. You, you basically that achievement always reflects back on you every time you use an item. Not hard. Super super psychologically super healthy. Super good. Uh in-game missive missions that you can unlock exclusive skins. Um I think Blackout does this wonderfully well. Uh whereby you can play the game normally and if you want a certain skin you you know kill some zombies or whatever. Uh would be nice or like an exclusive clothing item because PUBG works in modular skin systems always for example Fortnite does that not in more like in full skins Whew. cosmetics remove the crates bad future plan to have governments are cracking down on uh, loot boxes and as soon as everybody sees that you're manipulating 14 year olds and spending all their grandma's christmas money on site your loot boxes and uh, once the regulators and the governments are there you're gonna pay hell i can show you that so get rid of them as soon as possible and not make yourself guilty this is um consulting advice on the, how not to go to jail i'm giving you or giving basically every company or every representative of a company that's watching now a get out of free jail card because i can assure you one thing once the regulators when basically once it gets in congress in the united states 
shit will go down and it's gonna be bloody it's gonna be messy it's gonna be incredibly hard on the gaming industry as a whole if this gets to congress in you know the senate whatever the, the big guys in america that's gonna burn because you know they're like oh war and drugs yeah we have to protect the children but you know that's the reason why they keep weed illegal apparently probably an excuse because they get some lobbying money other than that um but you gotta think about one thing because they're now like oh yeah yeah we don't do uh, legalize uh, drugs for the health of you know let's all put them in jail all drug users and keep uh, drinking alcohol that's another story and i i'm <laughs> i chase some squirrels from time to time just so you know but once they realize that children are being manipulated for money psychologically addictive exploitation there's going to be hell to pay the whole world's going to be on fire quite literally because once every parent knows that their children are being manipulated by your game oh boy oh boy and if i'm not mistaken the suicide rates and stuff in south korea are pretty high um the government is pretty strict uh, they recently made a um you know, basically, if you used wheat as a South Korean in uh, Canada, you can still be prosecuted at them uh, in South Korea itself. It's technically, I guess, possible. But, like, they are pretty strict on certain things. And mental health isn't the greatest always. But if they decide, oh, this guy is fucking you know exploiting children ooh, ooh, ooh. i have a feeling this is a prediction people are going to jail for this but hey do whatever you want uh so for the rant rant is officially over let's get back to the program at hand the halloween teaser looks pretty dope um yeah the halloween skins like the clown mask and stuff were pretty nice um they're pretty you know they're wacky and some people are probably gonna hate on it because it's but geez, a serious game. It's a mil uh, it's a realism game. It's true, but you know, even in realism, they added like a cloud mask or something. But as I said, they seem to be a good uh, realism uh, between real a good blend between realism and fun. But um, and they, they I think this is where PUBG can ultimately shine because then again, it's game people have to keep remembering that uh, I'm talking way too much that's my problem in life um so um yeah the realism and fun um uh, it's kind of hard to do it's not always the easiest thing in the world sometimes you will hit sometimes you will miss Take some PUBG mobile ideas the way too many cosmetics. What do I mean with this? Uh, when I opened PUBG mobile, I just wanted to see how it goes. They have like so many skins everywhere. Everywhere. It's, it's incredible. They have like a, a corn dude, a pizza guy delivery, a, a firefighter or something. Some of them might be, you know, you might be like a little bit too much. And you'd probably be right. That's probably true. Um, but they have original skins. And PUBG is uh, upping their skin game instead of the fucking orange current stuff. Um, but I don't know. They have so much more ideas and implementations. And skins are not that hard to make. You're not going to tell me that. Especially not for a company that... What is it? 800 million in profit at least from... Sales alone. Okay, next one. Event pass! The greatest way to get revenue. Fortnite is... Uh, or the guy... The guy at Fortnite who did... Or this, like... Created the battle pass and implemented that well. Dota had it before them, I'm not mistaken. But the Fortnite battle pass is a genius. Genius way of making money. And it's ethically... Um, yeah, okay. Um, I consider myself a good player, blah blah blah. I'm not the best. I'm not... The 
RNG and got it to lend you a hand to complete each challenge. And that's basically the number one problem uh, that PUBG. I have a feeling they never test things out properly, which is a bad move. So, you. Please let the human playtest these. Um, as said before, this is the laundry list. Survive for at least 20 minutes, deal at least 200 damage to enemies, take no damage from the blue zone, loot at least 2 crates, CP, no, no idea what it means, I'm guessing dead bodies, revive teammates at least twice, killed at least 3 players, reached the top 10, took less than 100 damage, and you don't have to use the first aid kit. If you can kill 3 guys without taking any hit, props. But I can assure you, I usually took a hit. Alright. Okay. okay, okay, let's get back to that. Like, oh, the challenge. It's, it's just a clear sign that PUBG didn't test it out. It's just like, oh, it's a cool challenge, you know, in that meeting room. They wrote down something on their stupid whiteboard, uh, and, you know, that's fixed. Whew. Just copy paste formula from Fortnite, it's indeed not that hard. And while it's maybe hard to just random like copy paste everything, you can still you know copy some things, loot, loot, loot a wrangle, drop in a wrangle, uh get two kills with a shotgun, get doesn't have to be hard. Don't make it hard on yourself if it's easy. That one challenge is still holds for these days, basically one above. I need to stop ranting about that. I'm s I'm sorry if this uh, comes over as a little bit of a rant from time to time, but I'm really pissed at some things PUBG has done. Because it's not needed. Good event pass needs to be dual for for people who don't have the time to pay hours a day. But night just is incredibly well. You don't you can do your challenges in an hour. This is what people have. Alright? Make it hard. Don't make it insanely difficult, make it And in fact, the criticism I have of Fortnite's Battle Pass, or challenges in general, is that they are way too easy. But they have, of course, a casual and mainstream audience, so I get that for hardcore players. Self, kind of, they don't give a shit, really. Um, have a way to track in-game challenges, I probably did that one, make sure there's a variety of challenges. So simply, just do that. It over and over in 100 thousands of bombs. Um so what else have, do we have here? Um there's not more film yeah um so apparently some challenges didn't proc make sure your challenges proc please for the love of god it it happens it happens it's game development game development or uh pesky little things but make sure it doesn't crash as much as it, you know, avoid every crash you can. Because if somebody does like 20 minutes, half an hour of work, if they have two hours uh, free time a day, and then they have challenges, that's one thing they want to do in their free time, and it crashes, they're going to be pissed off. They're going to care, but they're, ca they're pissed off. Hmm. Oh. Ding, 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 ding. Um, time items as a reward are nothing more than insult to... Uh, nobody wishes to get shitty items that are gone after seven days. You can give timed items out for free. That's nobody will complain. But why would I work for a timed item? Like, even if it's not that I can just go in the store and instantly buy it, there's no way to get the item if I had time. There's one way, and that's the Steam market. And if I'm correct, you get 2.5% to 10% of the sales of every Steam market. So a 40 bucks skin. On the Steam market will net you four bucks at most. That's an idiotic thing that gives away the money to everybody else except yourself. It's ah oh, boy 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 boy. This is this is I I really have a hard time doing this. I I really want you know to say nothing but praise by the game I lost so much. But um <clears throat> for anybody watching this deciding. To ever go in game development, make sure the business side of it is good because without cash flow, or when you know guys like me make 150 bucks of your game and you make 
of them 60 at most because they decided they have too much money and decided to buy your pass anyway because i can assure you there's people like me that just bought you know that just sold the case and they stopped playing pubg so instead of making 150 bucks from me i earned it no oh, not bad of course but you know some of these items in need of completely new Make sure they are worth the buck. Nobody wants to work for something that's not worth. Nobody. If you, if I do something, you know, it's just, it's an exchange. I put in time and effort. I get something in reward for my time and effort. If that is, you know, if it's the scale, if my time and effort are like all the way down and the skin is all the way here. It's not good. If it's here, time and effort here and uh, the skin here, I'm gonna be. Oh, this is such a sale. This is such a, this is what we call a sale. Uh, a um, percentage sale you know or oh, something's 80 percent off so my in that case it would be money oh so it's way more worth 80 percent doesn't have to be i know but if you complete every you know uh, if you do a completed one event pass make sure the next one is a little bit cheaper or in the way of fortnite uh for example Fortnite does it um, make sure you can buy the next one. That would the players are hooked and telling you for I have I feel guilty that I didn't give Fortnite more money. And if you can get that and kill your customers, oh boy, that's how you get rich. Whew. Economy. <laughs> Let's go. Monetization of PUBG is one of the most confusing things and the weirdest things I've ever seen. <laughs> It's, it's, I am still baffled to this day about what the hell PUBG, who the hell manages, who the hell decides the economy in PUBG. I'm absolutely baffled. I have no, yeah, I don't know what to say. Ineffective, it's shady, it's money grabbing, it's uh, no work put in. It doesn't look anything like it, like anything good. It's unfocused. It's, it's, yeah, luckily for, as a player, you know, the monetization of PUBG is the least of my concern, but like, it just pains me to see a bad business model. Uh, cause I wanna, I, my life, I really wanna learn all kinds of, you know, I'm, I'm a business guy. You know, I wanna learn everything. I'm, I'm young, I'm stupid, I'm dumb, I'm cocky. Um, I don't know what else. You know, so I need to learn quite a lot in my career to become a successful businessman. Luckily, thanks to idiots like guys at PUBG's business model, I can learn a lot and make a lot of mistakes that doesn't cost me anything and doesn't shame me publicly. So I can just shit on them through my microphone on the internet, which is basically everybody's dream. <clears throat> ah, loot boxes. Remove them. I've worn it. I've said it. I think in this part, not part one. Um, loot boxes are are gonna be gone. Uh, sooner or later, the government like it's gonna reach a threshold, and there's no going back. And if you're the one still we're using loot boxes at the threshold, GG, gone. Whew. Um. So yeah, if you wanna psychologically keep your player base hostage. At least make it a little bit shiny, a little bit colorful, you know. Uh, if you sell people a painting, at least, you know, a shitty painting that took five minutes, at least make it somewhat uh, good to look at, you know. You're gonna make... That's why, uh, think about Battlefront 2, for example, the shiny animation when you got an epic, you know, and the, the disc flowing around. It's, it's a shitty move, but at least it was somewhat cool to look at, you know. At least... Use some loop to put it like that. <clears throat> Gonna de get demonetized so hard. Uh, the law is catching up to loot boxes. See, this is warning. Uh, sooner or later, they'll be coming for your whole blue hole. Use some loop. Being transparent about the chances in the loot boxes is also incredibly important to at least have some consumer protection. I mean, at least, at least show some appreciation for. Uh, the, your customer and don't give him false hopes. Oh, it's yeah, it's less than one percent. 
uh, was less than 1%, 0.0000001 or 0.0001. Difference, big difference. Uh, you know, with that one pan skin has like the, uh, you know, loss of 0%, 1%. Don't do that. Thank you. I'll write it down in case you want to have my document. Don't add incredibly low chance items. Yep. You can do timed items, exclusive items, etc. But don't do them in loot boxes. It's dumb. And it gets you the attention of the authorities, which you already should have noticed in the Benelux. Well, at least the Bene... Le. The Netherlands and Belgium. Um... Random chance to get loot boxes is one of the most ridiculous businesses I've seen. Um, yeah, so what, what is this referring to? Because it doesn't always seem clear. But basically in PUBG's case, you need to buy loot boxes in order to get a loot box. In order to open the loot box. So there's like 10 different loot boxes. I'm going to give them loot boxes for the case. Basically, um, so there's 10 of them. And then you get a random chance, like 10% each. Make it simple to get one. I... Whoa, dude. I'm a. Basically, anybody who is a little bit conscious of their uh, money and cares about it when they're buying stuff, they will not take their chances. Uh, so that's why it's ridiculous. This is literally preying on the weak or preying on the people that don't understand what's going on. And I don't blame the whole world for not knowing this. I blame. You guys are knowing this and exploiting it. Not everybody has to be a psychology major in order to play a video game. It's most that's ridiculous. Whew. Let's go. Stop giving out trial items. Nobody cares. Everybody hates him. Even even your main man, Wacky Jack, even that guy, who is probably your number one thing is since Shroud already uh, jumped off your train. Um, you know, Wacky Jack is still your your PUBG. Lover number one, number one fan. He makes great content. He's a super rational dude. He, you know, he, he does his best. He's super positive. I'll, you know, whatever. All these good things. Basically, he's like the, the best mascot you can have for a game. He's intelligent. He does incredible strategy breakdowns. Even he calls it bullshit. Then you know how bad you are fucking it up. Because not everybody is as nice as that guy. <sighs> As I'm the one who listens to other perspective view, I'll just treat the guy who says one. This is kind of hard for me, and I don't know. Maybe I should make like a separate video about it. The most ridiculous sales funnel ever. Um, and for those that don't know, a sales funnel is basically if you have 100 um, potential customers, how you need to lead them to a funnel. So you. If you have a product, you market it to 100 people, 50 people might click your, you know, might check it out. From those 50 people, uh, 25 might take a trial. And from those 25, 10 might um, get your product or try to buy it. Um, and here's a, um, hopefully a clear explanation of the, some kind of sales funnel that's done um, through dingen if we don't count the Steam market in it. A brief explanation of a sales funnel um basically remember if you market to 100 people about 10 or something will end up it might it of course the numbers difference from varies from product to industry to you know what else um but the, the sales funnel to get one singular item is incredible. of course they're moving away from it by uh doing um the, what you call it, the the time like the podcast royal skins and scarves so basically they're stealing the uh, fortnite item shop <sighs> since i know what the sales funnel is and the terrible customer experience that consumers i instantly sell them on the market so basically they made 15 bucks about that um so let's say they made I put in 60 bucks in total from, you know, a few skins. I like to look stylish, so a little bit of skins. Um, but I hate chances, so I always will buy the skins that are available that I know what I'm getting. And, of course, this is the transaction fee from Steam, uh, which is 15%, I think. 
uh, 10% goes to developer and an not mistaken, and 5% goes to Steam. Now this can totally be different whereby 5% goes to the developer and 10% to Steam. So in that case, 15 is a conservative number. I'm assuming that's the case because it would be coming off Steam, but hey. Oof. 150 days since trading got removed temporarily. Temporarily isn't 150 days, brother. No, not much to say there. I mean, I know you did it because of the hackers and the other, blah, 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 blah. I don't give a shit why you did it. Temporarily is removed. I tell people to go fuck themselves. But because I just want to send some skins to my friends, man. No. Whew, the skins have become better and better and better, but some are still completely useless, horrendous, and overpriced as Guns are, skins are the best example of this. Even the bullets are orange. Why? Literally, this is the, the orange skins are the prime example of the problem with PUBG. There's no attention to detail, there's no work put in. It's just, oh, let's make a fucking skin. Oh, how can we make a skin? Oh, I don't know. What if we, 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 we take the gun and we, we, we just drop it down in the bathroom? Uh, in the bathtub, full of orange paint. That's genius! Give that man a raise! And my apologies for my incredibly uh, bad uh, improvisation acting. <laughs> but like, it's... It proves a point, like... Like, if you have the orange car... If you reload the bullets, even the bullets are completely orange painted. Like... That's just obviously that there's like a fucking rip off. Like the, the, the shroud, shroud skins for example are like attention to detail. They have a certain style, they have this color pattern. They, they, they look stylish. They give you a feeling of style. Fashion statement, yo. <sighs> Broadcast royals should not be shown. Uh... Oh yeah, um, the Broadcast royals skins, those are the ones that of course are... Um... Well, the team skins. Basically, whenever PUBG holds an event, we make skins for the winners and the contesters. Um, and a profit, a part percentage of that in sale goes to the team in question. But it says a small percentage. It doesn't say what percentage. A 1% percentage is a lot less than a 35% percentage, which is good, also can be considered small. Transparency and your stupid secrecy doesn't get you anywhere in this case. Also, every skin in Broadcast Real, five bucks a piece. Are you shitting me? You'll probably make way more money by selling this. Uh, by selling them at a lower price point. Because, like, most of them are not worth at five bucks. No. Like, a skin with a, like, <clears throat> a plain, like, take for example the fucking PGI hoodies of the team. So, for those that don't know, you could, at PGI, the sort of World Championship, but, like, I think 30 teams joining in on the fun. Um, and every team of that, 24, 24, I think. I don't know. Let's say 20 plus teams. They had all like a hoodie. And what was the hoodie? It was literally the same hoodie, different color pattern, and just the logo of the team pasted on top of it. That's it. That's all. That was it. 10 bucks a piece. That's expensive as fuck and can tell you one thing. It took one guy one day in Photoshop after the hoodie was finished to make all of them. That's for 10 buck a piece, not worth. Uh, yeah, props, hats off uh, to, uh, you know, team up with creators for skins. Uh, I think more game companies should uh, celebrate their creators a little bit more. I can assure you one thing that uh, to everybody listening, I'm already lost my partnership with PUBG at this very moment of making this, but um, I care too much for this game to let it go waste, or at least try not to do anything that's in my control, get it, you know, to do what I have to do, basically. Have a seasonal event pass, as you call them, Fortnite does this excellently, uh, and keep doing them, keep doing them, keep doing them every Three months, every month, every two months. Two months seems like the perfect uh, way to do it. Uh, also, uh, if you do, you're gonna do it in two months, make sure that in big vacation, school vacations uh, being July and August, that the 
fast resets at the end of July, for example. So people have a chance to, you know, if they have a month long trip, they have a chance to complete all the challenges or something. Basically, care about people's planning. Don't do it four weeks. Four weeks is way too short. Uh, also, it puts too much pressure on the developers that had to make also skins. Oh boy. We're going good! I um, respect for everybody who sits through this. Not the easiest thing in the world. Okay, uh, there's an entry price in the game. What do I mean with an entry price? It's not free to play, so you have to pay bucks up front in order to get in. Um, is this good? Is it bad? Depends. Um, it makes sure you have a more mature audience by definition because they have money. But that doesn't mean that also means that if you put in microtransactions, then then you're kind of being shady a little bit. So yeah, give at least some you know yeah battle points to buy cosmetic items. So somebody who plays the game a lot can buy some items. Doesn't have to be much. I mean just. Make him like um, uh, what do you call it? Make the item go like twenty k BP piece. That make sure that people who grind a lot can be able to afford those skins. That ties into progression. They can work towards something they really want, and they will feel incredible when they once have it. So it's a win-win for both. It uh, either for the people that don't have time and just want to buy it. With the guys with a lot of money, they will buy it from you straight, so it's a great profit. And the guys who have a lot of time with little money, they will play a lot and then buy it, which makes them invested in your game. Either way, whether they have money or not, they you will win in the end, and they will win as well. Best situation of everything, but apparently it's pretty hard to explain. <clears throat> Okay, a premium game with premium cosmetics is always unfair. So, I mean, one can, uh, the whole point, World of Warcraft is the prime example of, you know, having lots of, lots of loot. Everything is like getting better gear, getting better gear, so you can do more raids, so yada, yada, yada. Endless progression is incredibly well thought out, or purely accidental, but it's hard as hell. Um, but you have to be careful if you, you have to be extremely careful if you decide to monetize people who already pay. Well, Farcast did it incredibly well, but uh, you have a feeling since Activision took over, it's kind of went all to milking, milking, milking. Okay, premium. Yeah, this is another rant thingy. Um, premium entry fee, 30 bucks doable but you know if you're gonna add this complete full set of loot box event pass time that in temporary this is this uh so that indeed document exclusive skins on time sales whatever time sales exclusive skins and time sales meaning um you have five days to buy it or it's gone forever the market greed is too not Castor Royale. Castor Royale skins. I mean, probably not everything, but the point is, it's too much. It's unfocused and it's just meant, oh yeah, if we do this, we can get money. If we do this, we can get money. Yeah, this is the same point. Like, if you, if you try to catch two rabbits, you'll catch none. That's basically it. Of course they make money of it, and of course there are people stupid enough to keep buying it. Um, but it's basically, give us the cash now, it's basically a cash out. So they want the cash now so they can get the fuck out. That's basically what this is. Uh, people feel scammed. Um, yeah, um, this is more of a, um, this point. Oh yeah, this. If they had a decent monetization like Fortnite, uh, I probably would have with my 150 bucks instead of earning it back into the game. Which didn't happen, of course. I might have put it in Fortnite. <laughs> that that would be the ultimate failure, of course. 
people feel scammed by the product now um this is pr more than it is um economy technically um how do i explain this yes most people are not caring that the art department and the programming department either way the bug fixers guys and the guys who make skins they don't care that they're two different teams most people see PUBG Corp doing this that's what they see that's the general thing that's always going to be like that um unless everybody suddenly knows the ins and outs of game development and the um how it works basically um so it is always two different teams and this is more of a tip and a uh, hopefully a guide for you guys to uh, come a little bit better at PR. Um, since they don't see the difference between those two, they're always going to assume the same. So basically they see, they think basically 100 people working at PUBG and 100 people making skins and nobody's doing the bug fixing. This is, this is purely PR. Like anybody rational and a little bit of, background knowledge and you know basically who does the research anybody rational is a little bit messed up uh the way i worded that that wasn't my apologies it wasn't meant to be um but you know the general public will not see the two different sides so if you're bringing out all these skins while the issues aren't fixed yeah then you have a problem because they think like the general public that is um, they're like, hey, what is this? What is this? You bring out skins and there's no fixes. So if you want to do it, hint, hint, fix a little bunch of shit and then add the skins in. In the same patch notes. Same patch notes, put it under everything that's fixed. That way people are like, oh yeah, they, already, they also fixed stuff. But you have to make sure there's a lot of stuff fixed and not simply a typo. Got it? Oof. Um, I, I can't do much about this game. So bad. Okay, uh, the Halloween skins. Uh, no, first is most skins are mediocre. That's every all my buddies find that. I have a feeling the internet finds that too. Most of the skins are completely, you know, they're literally overpriced uh, items that, and yeah, that's it. There's some cheap ass guy that instantly came up with the design and like instantly just threw something in paper and up oh, that's 10 bucks um i mean that's not how that's not how it should work right i don't think anybody wants clothing to pay clothing in real life then you know a let's say a custom suit for thousand bucks if it's not custom if it's just simply made cheap in the back of the room JK is all made in China now. Um, with labor exploitation. <clears throat> That's another topic. Um, but I mean like most skins. The, the Halloween skin nurse was probably the best thing. It's literally just some bandages over the top. Uh, with, with, with some hats. Like super easy to make I think from an art standpoint. So basically stop ripping everybody off and make it fair the only one next point the only one that was kind of worth it in my opinion was the clown mask what do i mean with the clown mask that's the the one pen that literally inspiration from pennywise the uh the it clown that uh, that one really feels like polished smooth definitely worth buying it that's also literally the only one i would buy that because like 20 bucks for a fucking for a fucking skirt from a nurse, you're shitting me, dude. Overpriced as fuck, yo. Um. Uh. Yep. Low price points are recommended for mass market products, aka games. Also, don't forget the premium fee. So, what am I trying to get here? Skins are not for a mass market public. Maybe that's the goal you're trying to make. Seems stupid to me. Uh. The more people invest in something. And that's also the goal of microtransactions is that they pay each week and not each six months that's the goal of micro microtransactions small payments so the smaller the payment the more likely they will pay next week 
if you can keep going that you got player investment and people will play your game more and are more into your game also you got a, a purple cow as uh, Seth Godin probably would say I've never seen or well, never I've rarely seen people invested so much into one game including myself it's truly a unique product so don't make go it away please Make it free to play title. This is what I would do. Uh, that way you can still justify your ridiculous price point skins you make. Plus, you already reached the plateau uh, being the um, the big um, let's put it, mass market. Not a lot of people are going to buy the game now. And free players make sure that a lot of players get in the game again. Um, you know, and that's basically to kind of Fortnite and Blackout. Because Blackout has 60 bucks entry plus cosmetics. So, if you want to counter Blackout, make it free to play. Best way to do it. I wouldn't care. I got 1500 hours uh, from 30 bucks. I don't give a shit if you make it free to play now or to. Uh, battle points are useless. Just putting it out there. Um, yeah. You made most of your money from the uh, from people buying the game. So if you want to make more, make it free to play, and hopefully those free to play guys um, buy some skins of it. Okay, that way, uh, yeah, that way you can just do that. Fortnite skins are also expensive. Quite sure you them. Same thing. Um, I agree to it, but you know you can earn V bucks. While playing the game, uh, that battle pass by one, I think, and you do all the challenge, you can pass multiple seasons. Also, not the case with you guys, PUBG. Um, so basically, you're copying only the bad stuff and not the good stuff. Baseball. Oh boy, what a mess to go through. BP is just useless. You're gonna give people something to do. Um. I mean, to, to reward them with something for their hard work. Please make it fucking. Give them BP exclusive skins like the skeleton mask from Halloween. That was a cool one. Stuff like that. Or the uh, motorcycle helmet. Stuff like that needs to become more. Um, um, what I would do personally from an economy standpoint is I would remove all skins, remove the Steam market, set completely that you're in full control of uh, the payment handle and that Steam doesn't take a cut. Um, so what I would do, all the crates that are now here, I would remove all the skins and the crates and I would make a deep and elaborate progression system with all those skins included. The ones that you have a small chance of getting, I would be completely... No, end of the spectrum when you're like level 100 or whatever the max level is yeah i would do that and that seems like the best thing to do so i mean remove it that way people you don't that way you get rid of the loot boxes you're not exploiting people with detections the government will leave you alone um governments of the world will leave you alone people are finally getting their progression system you are finally happy that people are investing more which if people are investing more time in the Okay. So there's basically six reasons right here, right now, that I have for you. If it's not already too late, because you might have fucked it already. There's six reasons why to remove the crates and get a deep elaborate progression system. If that doesn't convince you, I don't know what will. So I hope. I'm very sorry also for the listeners uh, <laughs> who just want to see what uh, how I would fix PUBG. Um, yeah. Now you know what I would do um, to get a better economy and a more player investment. With player investment, I by the way mean time, not necessarily the money. Yeah. So part three will cover the event mode, the esports ranking, and the community slash management, and hopefully some ideas and suggestions. And after that, I really hope that part three is more than enough, and I don't have to go to part four. This, whew, this is a mouthful to do. Hopefully, I will see you in the next episode, and hopefully, you are having some good ideas of your own. So make sure to share them with me. I would love to read what uh, other people think about how to fix PUBG. It 
it's an incredible incredible way that, that a lot of people are in, fell in love with PUBG and it's such a shame to see it go to waste that's why I want to make PUBG great again or we can't have the you know first first sight first moments again we can try to make it a credible credible enjoyable experience we we'll love to see the game evolve literally back on top of the map next to Fortnite, Minecraft, Blackout and Red Dead Redemption. Hopefully. Thank you very much for watching at least that you did all the way through. I really appreciate that. That's really uh, I'm gonna blush in a bit. Just thinking about it. Um, but hopefully I will see you in the party. Oof!